Welcome to our comprehensive guide on the trucking and free brokerage industry in full. So in this video, I will try to explore with you why it's crucial for you to understand various aspects when it comes to this specific field. So from the basics to advanced topics or issues that you may be dealing with and things you need to consider as you grow your business. This video is good for trucking companies. It's good for freight brokerages as well. And it's good for salespeople that are engaged in this type of industry. The reason we spread this type of news is because we want to make the industry a better place for all of you as you participate in it. And so it's something you can actually build and pass down as generational wealth to your children, essentially, or your loved ones or your significant others. That way, as you grow it, you're building a foundational basis of how you want to run your business, what's important to that business, and what you're going to do moving forward to make sure that this is something that can stay in your family for generations to come. So whether you're a newcomer to the industry or just looking for a little bit more knowledge or to deepen your knowledge in terms of freight brokerage and the trucking industry as a whole, how it functions, this video would be for you 100%. So first off, just an overview of the trucking and freight brokerage industry as a whole, as an industry. So this particular sector is actually the backbone of the global trade, um, you know, logistics. So we, ensuring, we try to ensure that goods are actually moving efficiently from manufacturers to consumers and understanding, of course, that this industry is vital because it impacts everything from the economy to daily life for all of us involved. Freight brokers also play a pivotal role in this particular industry. So they actually act as a middle person or an intermediary between the shippers and the carriers. And we always try to ensure as freight brokers that the goods are transported efficiently and cost effectively. Learning about this specific role helps you as a viewer Appreciate the complexities of logistics and the importance of coordination from both the broker side and the carrier side, respectively the driver or owner operator as well. First off, you will, as a someone that wants to participate in this industry, need to familiarize yourself with trucking terms and a familiarity with trucking terms is actually essential for your understanding of what you're supposed to do and how you're supposed to function in this industry. So terms like FTL, full truckload, LTL, less than truckload, or things like NMFTA freight classes are fundamental pieces of the knowledge to understand how shipments are actually categorized and priced accordingly for shipping. And this knowledge is actually crucial for effective communication and the operation within the actual industry itself. And there are various types of shipments, including FTL, LTL, partial shipping. Uh, there's also parcel shipping, expedited, over-dimensional, refrigerated shipments. This is just to name a few. Each type has its own requirements and actual challenges. And understanding these differences helps in selecting actually the right shipping method for the different types of cargo and also the right partner for shipping. You don't want to just put a random shipment on, on a random carrier that doesn't know what they're doing, for example, or vice versa, a really good professional carrier to take a load thinking it's going to be what it is, but because the broker didn't understand the fundamentals, puts the carrier in a difficult situation. And these things happen in the industry all the time. And different shipments do require these different types of equipment as well. So from things like dry vans to refrigerated trucks, knowing the equipment, there's, there's so many. I mean, we can sit here and talk about this all day. But again, knowing the equipment types ensures that goods are actually transported safely and efficiently. Safety is a big part of the industry because liability issues are not a good thing. So when things go wrong and you are held liable for a mistake or an accident or whatever happens, it could be a big deal for you as a, as a business. We, we also like to mention that INCO terms are international commercial terms that actually define what the responsibilities are between buyers and sellers. 
in an international transaction. So understanding these terms is crucial for anyone involved in global trade. Okay. We like to talk about and, and like to mention that you guys should look up and, and research the, and, and understand how important it is to distinguish between freight brokers, freight forwarders, and also third-party logistics companies. So each part plays a unique role in the actual supply chain itself. And knowing these differences helps in choosing the right partner for the logistics needs that are needed. Moving on to licensing requirements, freight brokers must comply actually with various regulations in both Canada and the United States. And this does include obtaining an MC number, DOT number, surety bond, and in some cases even insurance. So understanding what these requirements are, are actually essential for legal and efficient operation of a freight brokerage okay likewise carriers they also have to get an mc number dot number and a bunch of other things like and again mandatory insurance that they have to get in order to be an active participating member of the supply chain um, as the actual asset-based carriers as well starting a freight brokerage business actually does require investment and resources so from business planning to operational costs knowing what it takes to start and run a brokerage is crucial for success so you can set up a timeline like a business plan right so the business planning the startup side the operational cost to get it going this is all very important and effective business planning does involve understanding what those startup and operational costs are. So this does include everything from things like office space to technology and staffing, and even proper pl planning can help you ensure long-term sustainability by making sure you're hitting the right pieces and making sure that you're actually uh, participating in the right type of markets. Uh, sometimes it can be influenced by things like geography, um, by weather related events and uh, also by what your expertise are or what your niche is. Working as a broker or working as a broker agent. So like things like, should you open up your own freight brokerage or should you become an actual freight agent? These are things you have to think about as you're planning your business ahead. There's many different pathways in the freight brokerage industry to success. You can work for a company Okay, uh, starting your own business, you can do that as well, or work as a freight broker agent as well. Each path has its own advantages and, of course, challenges in the beginning, middle, and prolonged as well. And understanding what these options are can help you make a more informed decision of what path you want to take as someone that wants to participate in this industry. The earning potential, however, for freight brokers and the industry itself can be quite significant, primarily because of volume. So it can vary based on factors like experience, market conditions, even the business knowledge or acumen, understanding of how it all functions. But knowing the potential earnings can help establish realistic career go goals for you as uh, someone that wants to do this type of business. Finding shippers is also a critical skill for you as freight brokers. And it can involve identifying potential clients and building relationships as well. So effective techniques can include things like cold calling, cold emailing, and even leveraging platforms like LinkedIn or technology that's out there to help you deal with your customer relationship management. Okay. In addition to all of this, qualifying these potential shippers ensures that you are actually targeting the right type of shippers or the right type of clients. So this, this can definitely uh, involve things like uh, assessing the shipping needs, the budget, the reliability, uh, the credit rating of the customer. This all plays a role as to which shipper you'll want to go after because not, not, uh, not every shipper is the right type of uh, customer for you as well. We also talk a lot about understanding how to provide rate quotes to customers and also including things like how you go through an RFI, how you go through an RFP, how do you do an RFQ. These are essential things for securing business in the long run for your company. 
and knowing the difference between things like spot rates and contractual rates, as well as how to actually calculate um, fuel surcharge can help in pricing accurately and competitively in the market as well. In addition to this, clear agreements and contracts between shippers and brokers are crucial for smooth operation. So these documents outline the terms and conditions of the actual shipping arrangement as well. So uh, that, that's very important for you to understand how does an agreement look like, how does it function, what are the clauses inside of that agreement, and what you're supposed to do as a participating member in that agreement. Okay. In addition to this, understanding payment terms. Understanding payment terms and also things like factoring, right? options for you to get paid quickly this type of stuff ensures that you are actually maintaining healthy cash flow and minimizing financial risk for your company or your business as well effective cold calling techniques and cold emailing techniques these are essential for reaching out to potential clients and also building a robust client base as well Leveraging things like LinkedIn and other sales platforms, these things can significantly enhance your logistic sales efforts. And training in these platforms helps in maximizing whatever the potential is in these types of uh, tech tools out there available for you to actually find shippers, find potential partners in business as well. Understanding the life cycle of a shipment or a load from the start to the finish, that's crucial, crucial for efficient operations. So this can include everything from finding these potential carriers to actually managing the payments and managing even potential claims and everything in between. There's many touch points that happen between every single shipment. Load boards also. Okay, considering load bo boards in the beginning of your business to establish relationships with carriers. So load boards like LoadLink or DAT. Unfortunately, they are essential tools in the beginning for finding available um, carriers and likewise for the carriers to find available loads. And knowing how you can utilize these platforms effectively for, for, for success in business from both sides, both the trucking side the carrier side that is and the brokerage side as well and we talk a lot about this in our course that we have for the advanced uh, sales course that that we teach in addition to this tools like transportation management systems and carrier onboarding platforms right streamlining operations and improving even efficiency in your day-to-day -day tasks as a freight broker we talk about this in the course as well or things like finding reliable carriers and qualifying them through vetting tools. This ensures that you're actually handling shipments safely and efficiently for your customers. Visibility tools, they call them tracking tools, right? So visibility tools can help in tracking carriers and ensuring that shipments can actually arrive on schedule or that they are on schedule for arrival. Any deviation, anything that's different, you get notifications immediately as to what's happening. So this enhances transparency, reliability, and also credibility with your shippers. And clear agreements and contracts between brokers and carriers are actually essential for smooth operations and minimizing disputes as well. So broker-carrier agreements are things we talk about in our course as well. Managing claims and different types of uh, these scenarios. Managing claims in terms of insurance and handling typical scenarios like freight hostage situations, uh, situations, no-shows, uh, cancellations. These are all part of being a freight broker uh, in general. How do you deal with this? And knowing how to deal and handle these situations ensures smooth operations uh, in the long run. In addition to this, in our course, we also talk about ways you can digitize or make your freight brokers a more digital type of environment. So leveraging technology tools can help in growing your business and staying competitive in a very, very fast paced and, and, and changing world. Uh, this whole logistics uh, world that we participating in. OK, you will face challenges as a freight broker as well. So things like market volatility. So the freight market is highly volatile right so with with rates fluctuating due to factors like fuel prices economic conditions things like seasonal demand 
this unpredictability can actually make it challenging for you to maintain consistent and profitable margins, okay? In addition to this, regulatory compliance. So brokers should look at many different regulations, including licensing, insurance, safety standards, to get the understanding of where they need to be on these regulations. And keeping up with these regulations, especially when they are changing, can be the time-consuming time and mundane and costly task. But if you don't keep up with them, they could actually prove to be costlier and make it even more expensive to run your business uh, or potentially fail in the business if you're not keeping up with the regulatory compliance. Also, ensuring that carriers are reliable and that they're meeting the safety standards, that's also crucial. So they're vetting carriers. That can be definitely a challenge for you as freight brokers, especially when dealing with a new carrier or less established companies, right? So we talk about ways you can find reliable carriers and keep reliable carriers in the course that we teach. Maintaining cash flow as well. So cash flow management is actually a significant challenge. So brokers often have to pay carriers before receiving payment from the shippers, which can actually strain finances. So factoring and other financial tools can actually help, but they can definitely come with their own costs and risks. So that is a challenge that freight brokers face as well. The logistics industry is also rapidly becoming more tech enabled, right? More digital. So keeping up with these latest technologies can be very, very long tasks uh, ahead of you but integrating systems like tms tools tracking or visibility tools even digital load boards or digitizing the load booking process can actually help you in the long run to become uh, an established freight broker in that sense okay building strong relationships as well with shippers and carriers is essential for long-term success so it does definitely require consistent communication trust building sometimes navigating even conflicts or misunderstandings. The freight brokerage industry is very competitive with many brokers trying to get similar or same or identical clients. But if you differentiate yourself or you find a way to sell yourself differently from your competition, you will have that competitive edge that you can sell to your customers in that, in that respect. You'll be dealing with things like disputes and claims like damaged goods, delayed payments or shipments or whatever in those natures. Effectively, managing these types of situations requires strong problem-solving skills and a good understanding of the legal and insurance processes, what you're liable for and what you're not liable for as well. Economic downturns are things you'll deal with as well, and this can lead to reduced shipping volumes and even very tight mar margins for you as a freight broker. So brokers need to be very adaptable and find ways to maintain business during these tough economic times as well. Customers are also increasingly expecting real-time updates and high levels of service. So meeting these expectations definitely requires efficient processes and reliable technology as well. So these challenges in the brokerage industry are significant. They're not impossible to overcome. You just need the right foundational understanding and the right advice as to how you can move forward. And we teach this in our course as well. And by staying informed and leveraging technology and building strong relationships, you as freight brokers can definitely navigate these obstacles and thrive in this dynamic field. Likewise, carriers can do the same as well. And managing cash flow is actually crucial for success of any freight brokerage business, just like any other business, right? So you, you have to consider how you're going to do this as well. So along with the challenges comes that management of the cash that you're bringing in or the management of how quickly that cash will come in uh, from your shippers or whoever you're dealing with, okay? So... Again, some effective strategies for handling cash flow. And this is information we're giving you guys for free. This is, this is information you guys, if you've made it this far in the video, this is things that can help you understand how this business works. Freight factoring is something you should look at. It's a popular method when you want to sell your unpaid invoices to a factoring company. 
in exchange for that company to give you immediate money or cash. So this helps bridge the gap between paying carriers on time and receiving the payments from your shippers depending on your payment terms and ensuring that you can have the funds needed to keep operations running smoothly uh, and efficiently. In addition to all of this, it can help with payroll as well and all that kind of stuff, right? Also, efficient invoicing. So you're getting accurate invoicing, and that's essential for, for this industry. So ensure that invoices are actually sent out as soon as the shipment is completed. So implementing things like automated invoicing systems can actually help reduce errors and speed up the billing process. Negotiating payment terms as well. So negotiating favorable payment terms with both shippers and carriers. As an example, try to secure shorter payment terms from the shippers and longer terms with the carriers. This can provide a cushion and improve the cash flow. Now, I'm not saying you're going to ever secure with a carrier 120 days or 200 days. That's for the mega shippers and the mega enterprise shippers that have, you know, three, four, five hundred loads um, of volume, right? But for you as a beginning uh, business, right, with the carriers establishing maybe some kind of agreement with their brokerage, uh, with their uh, factoring company can help you better run your business as you wait for your money from your shippers, right? So that way the cash flow is healthy, consistent, and in, in line with when you need to pay the carriers. It's very important to pay the carriers, by the way. Very, 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 very important, okay? In addition to this, regular financial reviews as well. If you're conducting financial reviews to forecast cash flows and identify potential problems or shortcomings or shortfalls, this can be a proactive approach, and this allows you to address issues before they become uh, critical, right? People waiting too long is a big issue in life in general, okay? So you, you got to really take this into consideration. Also, maintaining a cash reserve. <clears throat> so conducting a regular financial review to forecast cash flows and identify um, what what that's going to look like and making sure that keeping a cash reserve can actually help you manage unexpected expenses and periods of low revenue so this uh for lack of a better term buffer i guess uh, ensures that you can continue operating your business without interruption through these tough times okay and streamlining your billing processes to ensure invoices are actually sent promptly and follow follow up on late payments diligently and this can reduce the time it takes to receive payments and actually improve the cash flow. Okay. Also, leveraging technology to manage cash flows, uh, cash flow more effectively. Okay. So, tools like TMS systems, accounting software can help track expenses and manage invoices and actually forecast these cash flows that we we're talking about or this cash flow that we're talking about. And choose the right factoring company based on their reputation, fee transparency, additional services that they may offer as well. A good factoring company can provide not only immediate cash, but also support for your business growth as well. Okay, support, support you for your business growth. And be selective about the shippers that you're working with. Please avoid unreliable shippers who delay payments for no reason and who can significantly um, hurt your cash flow. So work with the ones that are looking to significantly improve your cash flow as well, rather than ones that are just in it for themselves. In addition to this, embracing automated solutions, okay, automated bookkeeping, financial management solutions, this can help you keep the track of your cash flow more and more efficiently. And these tools reduce manual errors and actually can save time in the long run for you. So again, managing cash flow effectively is actually vital for the sustainability and growth of your freight brokerage business. And by implementing these types of strategies, you can ensure a steady flow of funds, reduced financial stress, and position your business for success and long-term success as well. There are ways you can also negotiate payment terms with your shippers and it's crucial and it's important to know this and manage cash flow and maintain a healthy business relationship by implementing some strategies that I'm about to let you know.
And this is also information we're giving you guys for free. Okay, we talk a lot more about this kind of stuff as well in the course that we teach. But this stuff that I'm about to state is also something you can consider. So understand your needs and limits. And so before entering negotiations with shippers, clearly understand your cash flow needs and your limits. Know how long you can afford to wait for pay payments and what terms are non-negotiable for your business. And research uh, the shippers payment practices as well. So research your shippers typical payment practices, understand their payment cycles and financial health as well. And this can give you leverage in the negotiations. If you have a history or if, if they have a history of late payments, you might actually push for shorter terms with that type of shipper as an example. Okay. Likewise, if they're pretty healthy on the payment scheduling and they seem like their days to pay are good and they're, they have good credit history, you can probably offer favorable terms for them as well. You can also offer incentives for early payments. So consider things like offering discounts on other incentives for early payments. So as an example, 2% uh, discount if the invoice is paid within 10 days. And this can encourage clients to actually pay sooner and improve the cash flow as well because they're saving money as well. In addition to this, negotiate gradual payment terms as well. So if a client insists on longer payment terms, negotiate a gradual payment schedule. So for instance, 50% upfront and the remaining 50% upon delivery. And this can actually ensure that you receive some cash flow during the project itself. And set clear payment terms as well in the contracts. If you're clearly outlining payment terms in the actual contracts, include due dates, late fees, penalties for late payments, and this can actually set clear expectations and provide legal backing if issues ever come up. If, you're, if you use factoring services, let your shippers know. Factoring companies can provide immediate cash flow by purchasing your invoices and knowing this might actually encourage shippers to agree to the payment terms as scheduled. Maintain open and regular communication with your clients. So communication and communicate regularly with the shippers. Regularly follow up on invoices and friendly reminders. And this can actually help ensure timely payments. And building a good relationship can also make clients more willingly to accommodate your payment terms. And sometimes it's actually better to walk away from a deal if the payment terms are too long or unfavorable. And know your limits and please be prepared to decline offers that can actually jeopardize your cash flow in a detrimental sense. And try to leverage as much as you can the use of technology as we move forward here in this remainder of this decade and into the next. So use invoice and accounting software to automate and track payments. And these tools can actually send automatic reminders and help you stay on top of whatever your accounts receivable is looking at. Okay. And always try to seek professional advice. If you're unsure about negotiating payment terms, it, consider seeking advice from financial advisors or consultants and logistics as well. They can provide insights and strategies into tailoring the best solution specifically for your business. Negotiating these favorable types of payment terms is actually essential for maintaining a healthy cash flow and ensuring the sustainability of your business and understanding your needs, researching your shippers, leveraging these types of strategies we've talked about. You can actually secure terms that benefit both parties. Okay. And in the contracts itself, there are some things you need to consider as well. This is more things, more value we're giving for you guys for absolutely free of cost. Okay. So again, some things you can consider when you're drafting contracts with your shippers. Start by including the full names, company names, contact information, and all parties involved as well. So this should also include any relevant ID numbers such as the MC number for the carrier side or any type of numbers that are associated with whatever party you're working with. Clearly define the scope of services to be provided. 
Okay, so this includes the types of shipments, equipment used, and any specific requirements or conditions for the transportation of goods. We actually do give out to you guys a broker carrier agreement, a shipper broker agreement as well. So you guys can use as a template to see what the industry standards are. And it's a part of taking the course. You actually get it as additional post-training support documents that we send out. And there's thousands of them, by the way. There's a lot. There's a lot of things we send out after training as well. In addition to this, Outline the specific rates and fees associated with the services. So this can include things like basic shipping costs, fuel surcharge, handling fees, and any other types of expenses. And transparency in pricing does definitely help avoid any kind of misunderstandings when it comes to this. And one of the most important parts of this contract in terms of the shipper carrier and also the broker carrier as well, the specifically the payment terms part include the due dates the late fees penalties for late payments uh, clear payment terms also can help ensure that any party involved in that transaction can understand their obligations both from the recipient side and the actual pay, pay uh, payor side okay in addition to this include things like the details of the liability and the insurance requirements for both parties and this should definitely cover who is responsible for damages, losses, and insurance coverage limits. Okay. And define the start and end dates of the actual contract. So terms and determination uh, dates. So things like conditions for early termination, it provides a clear timeline. Okay. So the conditions provide a clear timeline under which the contract can continue or end or renew as an example. You should include things like dispute resolution as a clause. Okay, so include that clause and it outlines the process for resolving any problems that may happen. It can include things like mediation, arbitration, legal action, and this helps ensure that the disputes are actually handled efficiently as well. Include clauses like confidentiality as well. Okay, so this type of clause can protect sensitive uh, information that are shared between the parties. And this ensures that the proprietary information is actually not disclosed to third parties as well. It should include things like changes as well or amendments. So specify the process for making any changes to the contract. And this can actually ensure that any changes that are agreed upon by both parties are documented properly. And setting up clear contracts is crucial for the success of your freight brokerage business, your trucking business as well. And by including these key elements, you can actually ensure that all parties understand their actual responsibilities. And this can reduce the risk of any disputes that may come up. Okay. And in terms of everything we've just talked about in these last 33 or so minutes, it is about specifically making sure that you sit down, come up with a business plan and go through all of these different things. So when you're listening to this or as you've listened through this, or if you get to this point in the video, write down for yourself all these things that we've talked about. You can research it yourself or you can go with us as a your actual trusted consultant and your actual trusted um, course provider. Um, consider it is an online course unless, of course, um, you're in our vicinity here where we're located then we may be able to come to you in person and do a training in person with you. But for the most part, it is online where we go back and forth with you um, on, a, on a basis of a live interactive sessions. Um, and we just sit and we talk about all of these things. There's an actual course itself presentation that we do of roughly about 200 different slides that we go through and uh, different things that we talk about. And like I said, the post-training stuff is what's best about what we provide, right? It's the fact that you get to talk to us, pick our brain and discuss your issues, grow your business and actually go through the entire process for many years to come. So we stay in touch. We remain as contacts even after the course is completed. That's that's what that's what we give the best. I put my heart and soul into 
instructing the course. I make sure that it's relevant, it's up to date. Any changes that are ever made in the industry, it's immediately changed in the course. So anything that's changed um, from a regulation perspective or compliance perspective, we let you know. We also let you know where that information is found so you can keep up to date in the industry even after the course. A little bit just about me as an instructor. I've been in the industry for 15 years. Um, I've owned a trucking company, I run a brokerage, um, still actively participating in brokering as well, growing my business that way. We also do the training stuff. Um, I started early on in my, in my, before the career of trucking and logistics, I actually went to a university for biochemistry and I decided to get into trucking and logistics with my dad. My dad um, was um, the first driver that worked with me and um, he taught me a lot that I know about the industry in the beginning. Um, my dad about retired about 2019 or so. And, um, you know, we, uh, we continue to participate in this industry and we're just trying to share our knowledge. A lot of the stuff, there's a lot of free stuff on the channel you guys can take a look at. The course is very structured, it's very detailed, and that's why it's 16 full hours of instruction. So anybody that wants to take it, it is very long, 16 hours, right? So it's not just talking about terminology and sitting there and, you know, all boring and stuff. No, we put in our honest effort. We make sure to show you real life examples of everything that we talk about. And we make sure that give you all the post training support that you need. All right. So with that being said, please give this video a like, a share, a comment, subscribe to the channel as well. Uh, we are trying to make the channel more noticeable. Um, you know, that's going to come down to the viewers who click like and comment and share the, the content to others as well. So thank you very much for listening this far. And um, my name is Nerf. Keep updated on the channel. There's a lot of things that we throw out there and uh, looking hopefully to see you guys in one of the upcoming courses. Um, if that is something you'd like to do, you guys can always reach out to me. Uh, my email will be in the description and, um, yeah, so enjoy the video. Ciao.